Well, what we'd like is 3 fourths times 1 half, not to return a decimal number in our system, but to return 3 eighths. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a system where we have some constructor called make rat. Well, let me not define it yet. We'll define it later. We're going to make rat, which is going to take a numerator and a denominator and return some representation for a rational. For a rational number. Now, if we have this constructor, we're also going to need something called selectors. So this is the constructor. This is how we build it up. We need selectors, something to get the pieces out. In this case, we're going to have a selector called numer, which will return the numerator of x assuming that x is a rational number built up by make rat. And similarly, we'll have denom, which will return the denominator. Of x. Okay. Now, we've got this constructor. We've got these selectors. Let's just assume they work. Let's not even talk about how they work. You guys have been doing this already. You've been using schemes, primitive procedures without questioning what happens inside them, right? So let's just assume that we have this constructor, the selectors, and go with it. This is a data abstraction. Okay, this is a way for us to think about making rational numbers without actually knowing how they're represented internally in the system. So let's look at how we could write some code. We're going to add two rational numbers, n1, d1, plus n2, d2, not to be confused with r2, d2. Sorry. Not funny, not funny. n1, d2, plus n2, d1, over d1, d2. Okay. So let's write the code. And by the way, actually, the code that I'm putting up on the board today for rational numbers is in your book. In section 2 1. So we're going to define a procedure add rat on x and y. Again, assuming that x and y are rational numbers. Okay, let's see. What do we need to do? Okay, so we're going to need to do some multiplications here. Okay, so what we've been looking at so far for the value we've been returning, we've been doing things like adding or multiplying. Here, what we want to do is we want to preserve the numerator and preserve the denominator. That bar is preserved by our constructor, make rat. So we're going to make a rational out of, well, it takes a numerator and then the denominator. So what's the numerator going to be? The numerator, numerator x times the denominator of y. Uh, OK. So let me, we're going to add those, right? So we'll take the numerator of x. Oops. Yeah, yeah. Numerator x, denominator y, 3, added to denominator of x. 1, 2, My friends get off a little bit there. 
Okay, so this is our numerator. We're going to add the result of multiplying the numerator of x times the denominator of y to the result of multiplying the numerator of y times the denominator of x. That's the first thing that we're passing to make rat. It needs one more thing, the denominator. The denominator is defined as the denominator of x times the denominator of y times denom x, denom y. One, two, three, four. Questions? How do we define a rational being subtracted? Well, that's equal to d2 minus 2d1 over. Okay, so how do we write sub rat? Okay, so I'm hearing it looks a lot like this, except we're going to change that. Okay. And for fun and excitement, since I know you guys had so much fun on problem set two, you could write some sort of combined rat. But we're not going to do that here. <laughs> rat master, did I hear? <laughs> the denom y. Numer y denom x one two three times the denominator the suggestion was you can define that by simply saying add rat x minus y. Okay, can we say minus y? Not unless, not unless the, the interpreter knows what to do with that. You know, that, that that'd right. be y minus we don't know. Y is a rational number. And we have no idea how it's represented in the system. Okay? So, because of that, we don't know if we can just negate it. However, we could write a procedure to negate a rational. And how would we do that? I'm going to define negate rat. It's only going to take in one rational number. You only negate one number. So we're going to, once again, make a rat out of, I hear, negate the numerator. <coughs> Do I want to negate the denominator? No, because no, then I just make it positive again. So we're just going to say denom x. Okay, so now with negate rat, we could do define sub rat xy make rat, or rather, sorry, a call to add, starts with the letter A, add rat of x negate y. Oh, sorry, negate rat. Questions on that? So we can't just put 
one of the primitive operators, plus, minus, multiplication, divide, and use those on our rational numbers because we need to be using our constructors and our selectors. We need to build it up with constructors, and we need to get the pieces of it using our selectors. Okay. Questions? How many hours of sleep did you guys get last night? <laughs> Few? <laughs> Not too many? <laughs> Okay, let's do multiply rat. So n1 d1 times n2 d2 equals n1, rather, n1 n2 d1 d2. Define melt rat of x and y. Okay, what are we going to do here? All right, we're going to make a rat. We're going to return a rational number made up of two pieces. The first piece is, I hear numer x denominator x. Is that what I want? Numerator y. Okay, so that's our numerator and our denominator, similarly. Denom x and denom y. Okay. So, how could we do some math? How would I define a rational number? Let's say I want to define a rational number called one-half. <clears throat> Make rat one-two. And if I wanted to define three-quarters, Do I care what make rat does? No. If you tell me there's a contract for these constructors and selectors, if you say this is how it works, I give you this to build it up, I give you this to take it apart, and you tell me that contract is going to hold, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, like software engineering always works, right? In any case, if somebody hands me a contract and says this is how it works, I don't care what it does inside. Now, one could argue you kind of care what it does inside because you don't want them doing something really stupid. It takes exponential time. But I don't really care what happens inside as long as they tell me this is how it's going to work. So now, if I wanted to multiply two rational numbers, let me define this to be the answer. What would I do? I want to multiply two numbers. One half and three quarters. Malt rat. One half. Three quarters. One. Two. Okay. Now. One thing we might want to do is give our user some way to print out a rational number. Because we don't exactly know how malt rat is defined, and we don't know what rep representation we're going to be getting here. In fact, malt rat could return some procedure. We don't know what it's going to do. So we need to write a procedure to print our rational number. which we will call, I hear people whispering, print rat, print rat. <laughs> yep. <laughs> A much better name. <laughs> much, much better name. But to stay with the convention in the book, we'll go with print rat. 
Guys are much funnier than I am. You win. Okay, so we want to print a rational number. So what we're going to do is use a combination of new line. I think we talked about this before. It's just going to go to the next line in our buffer. And then we can use the command display. Okay, so what do we want to display first? The numerator of x. Display takes in only one argument. So now we'll say display. Let's put in a division sign so it actually looks like a fraction when we spit it out. And then we'll display the denominator of x. So that's going to print out a rational number for us. So then, instead of having to define it to be something, we could just say print rat, malt rat, one half, three quarters. And what would this print? Uh, three, three slash three slash eight. I'll print out three slash eight. Are one half and three quarters written out longhand? Those, those are uh, <coughs> rational numbers. We define them variable names to be rational numbers. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, Scheme is not smart enough to say, oh, one half, you must have meant. No, we had defined those up here and could have easily have been A, B, C, D, but for the sake of example, it makes a lot more sense to call them one half and three quarters. In Scheme, we can name things using define. And we can name procedures. So if it was returning a procedure, we could name it. I've just never heard of a data Constant. structure before. So. Okay. Yes, we're just, and actually we haven't even seen a data structure before, right? Thank you. Uh, we haven't seen one before, and we haven't seen one yet. Because all we're looking at are these contracts. Make rat, and then numer and denominator. We don't even know what structure's underneath there. We have no idea how this is being represented in Scheme. It's often known as an abstraction barrier. We're being prevented from seeing the internals. I mean, somehow it's pasting three and four together, right? So it could be writing a procedure. So make rat takes two arguments and then returns a lambda expression. Or it could do something else. Yep. I'm curious about the input for something like subrat, subrat x, y. Is that where we put like subrat and we put in one half and three quarters? What would you put in? Right, so we would call subrat. We could also say, similarly, Print rat, sub rat, and Bob Dole of the lecture. <laughs> so we sub rat three quarters, one half, we're going to get what printed? One slash four will be printed. Okay. Yes? Scheme doesn't have whole numbers, right? So we might end up. How, how do we make sure they come out as a whole number? Kind of we're not dividing anything, so we're not. We're not we're no, 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 not in public multiplication, but when you do the division, you actually divide some numbers, right? So you might end up with um, coming out with something that's not, not whole numbers. There's no division. No, no, this is a multiplication, sorry. But actually, if you were dividing rat, there would be no multiplication either because, and, yes, rather, n1 divided by d1 over n2 divided by d2 is equal to 1, d2, n2, d1. So we're not actually doing any division there either. 
I guess somehow I'm. But I think that the, the issue is a general one of, of rounding error, and that that is an issue, uh, and there are we ways to get around it. Wouldn't subred actually return two slash eight? Yes, it would. Very good. Why? Why is subred going to return two slash eight? Well, actually, we don't even know, do we? It could return one fourth. It could return two eighths. Because we don't know what make rat does. We've been told make rat takes two numbers and makes them a rational number. Okay. Given that, I would make the assumption that it does not do the reduction. Because if it does do the reduction, they'll probably say make rat takes two numbers, finds the greatest common divisor, and then takes that out of it, returning a reduced fraction. Okay. Since we weren't told that, the likelihood is that's what will be returned. Okay. So. That said, let's figure out what make rat and rat and numer and denominator are. But before we look at that, let me talk about a new data structure, because that's what make rat, numer, denominator are going to turn out to be in this case. Okay, so we haven't seen any data structures. Today we're going to see what's known as a pair. And a pair has room for two pieces of data. And the data here can be numbers, can be variables, can be a procedure. Well, the variable will be evaluated. But it can be a procedure. Um, could be another one of these pairs. Okay, so pairs have the property of closure. Okay, So we can pass, we can have a pair point to a pair. So how do we build a pair? In Scheme, we use cons. Cons makes a pair. So if we were to say cons 1, 2, this is going to build a pair 1, 2. First cell points to the first element, second to the second one. This is just a notation for us to draw it on the board. It's called the box and pointer diagram. Okay, so internally, we actually don't know how it's represented. Okay. At least we're not going to talk about it right now. Okay, but on the board, we'll represent these as drawing them as box and pointer diagrams. Just like the substitution model, it's just a convenient way for us to try to picture what's going on here. And draw the box and pointer diagram. So let's actually define this to be A. So A is going to be bound to that structure. It's not a pointer, it's a binding. We draw it like this for convenience sake. Okay? If you guys have done C, it's not exactly like a C pointer. Okay? So we've got A pointing to 1 and 2. So that's cons. Now, given cons, given that we can build up pairs, we need some way to take them apart. Just like we had make rat, we then needed numer and denom. If we've got cons, we need some way to take out the pieces of the pair. So this part of the pair here, the first cell, this is known as the car of this pair. And this cell here, this is known as the cutter, CDR. Car and cutter. Just a common pronunciation for it. So let's say, given A, I want to get the number 1. How would I write that? I'd write car A, which will give me 1. If I'd like to get the 2, I would write <coughs> could array to get the 2. Okay. Questions so far? Do those things mean something? Car and cutter, they're names for primitive procedures. Isn't it, yes, they mean 
car stands for contents of the address register, and cutter stands for contents of the decrement register. This is a reference to the uh, IBM 701 architecture. This is the first architecture on which LISP was implemented. I like to say, they stand for primitive procedures and scheme. <laughs> So cons makes a pair, All right? So you think it's called a pair. Yes, it's two element data structure. Right? It's a pair. This is a first cell and a second cell. The first cell we get using car. The second cell we get using cutter. Do they have to be the same thing, or can they be different things? Like, do they both have to be numbers, and they both have to be procedures? No. No, we can have anything. Be in those. No, but what we can do is we can chain them. Sure. Okay, so what we could do is we could define B. The reason I'm going to define it, it just makes it convenient when we write the cars and the cutters to be able to have a name for it. So what we could do is we could cons, say the first cell could be a cons of one and two, and the second cell could be a cons of three and four. Okay, so what would this look like? Well, this is our top level pair. The first one points to this pair. One, two. And the second one points to this pair here. Three, four. And then B is bound to that. I saw you both came up at the same time, so <laughs> whichever one in goes first. What's the car of uh, B return? What's the car of B? Well, it's this here. The way that scheme prints a pair is 1.2. So that's why scheme that will print a pair. When you ask for the value here, the value that will return is 1.2 in parens. Yes. Um, this cascading con structure, that's not, I mean, that's not the end all of these types of data structures. Is there more than this? Is that what you're asking? <laughs> um, at the basis of it, sure. We're going to see lists in the next lecture, but lists are just built up out of con cells. No. We just build lists up from cons, as we'll show how that breaks down. If we wanted them to be actually joined, is that possible? Like the, the 1, 2, and 3, 4. The 1, 2, as we have it now, still remains a separate pair from 3, 4, which are within B. But <coughs> like when we do the, the car of B, we get 1, 2. Sure. How would we, how, but how would we get the number 1? The car of the, the car. The car of the car. The car of the car, right? So you could say the car of the car of B, and that would return 1. So could we join them? If you're asking, can we somehow create some massive structure like that? No. No, no, we can't do that. But what we could do is we could define. It would, it would actually print out paren 1, dot 2, and paren. That's the way that it will print out a pair. So what we could say is we could define C to be the cons of 1 to the cons of 2 to the cons 3, 4. What this would look like is 1. We could draw this out this way if we wanted. 2. Three, four. Okay, so this looks a little bit more like putting them sort of in a row. So the car of C would then be one dot two dot three dot four. No, the car of C is what the first cell points to. So the car here would be one. 
if you wanted it to print out, you could just have it, you could say C, and that would print out 1, dot 2, dot 3, dot 4. Hmm? It's not, well, yeah, okay. It'll almost do that. It'll almost do that. <laughs> I could talk about lists today. We could talk. We could talk about lists today. Let's talk about lists a little bit today. When scheme, when there's a dot and a paren like that, it doesn't actually print it. So it would say one, two, that one would go away. So that's actually how it would print out. Yep. What's the cutter of C return? What's the cutter of C? Well, the cutter is what's pointed to by this box. So that would actually print out 2, 3, dot 4, because there would have been a dot paren there. And that goes away. It doesn't actually print that. Let's finish a little more on car encoder. We'll look at lists, because we're here. Um, when you write car of the car, there's a shorthand notation for that. So car, car B can be written instead car of B. Subtle pronunciation difference. Scheme will understand that. And I believe it goes up to six in the middle here. <laughs> sure, make fun of the natives. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's not, it's not ka, <laughs> it's car. There actually would be an R there. And the Bostonians would not pronounce the R. It would be more of an H sound. Ka. It's your Boston pronunciation lesson for the day. OK, similarly, let's say we wanted to pull out this pair. Let's say we want to pull out the three. What would the three be? How would we get three? Oh, are we taking the cutter of the car or the car of the cutter? Well, first thing we want is this, right? That's the cutter. That's the first thing we do. So we take the cutter. So the cutter of B, that's what we take. And then we want to take the car of that, OK? Which could also be written as catter. Okay. Pronunciation gets subtle as you add more A's and D's. And you could various things like that. Yeah, pretty cool. This is a compression. Okay. <laughs> you guys can make up all sorts of things about this. Here we almost wrote out a list structure. So let's just do lists today because we're here, and then we'll do more on lists the next class, which is tomorrow. I need board space. Everybody got this structure down? If you just, if you just evaluate C, will it spit out that whole, like, set, uh, will it spit out the, the this is what it would print here. Okay. And would you call C in parentheses or just C? Would you call C in parentheses or just C? Just <laughs> Why would we call just C and not put it in parentheses? No, oh, it's not. We didn't write return a lambda special. It's not an operator. It's not a procedure. So we don't want to apply it. We'll get an error if we try to apply it. Okay, list. As I alluded to a few moments ago, we have lists in Scheme. And we can write list. And we could have written list 1, 2, 3, 4. List, if we wanted to draw a list. Actually, let me talk about the sugaring, then we'll draw it. List the sugars into cons, first element, 2. Cons of the second element, two. Cons third, cons fourth, which would continue to go on. When we run out of elements, the last thing that is cons on is a nil, which is also sometimes represented as quote open close paren. One.
This would be drawn as, once you desugar it, it's easier to see how we would draw it. We've got a con cell. First one points to a one. The second one points to another con cell in which the fir first element is two. And the next one points to another con cell that has the first element three. Another con cell, first element four. And the way that we denote nil in the box of pointer diagram is by putting a diagonal line through that last cell. Yes? Is that an asterisk symbol quote before the parentheses? No, that's just that. Like, is it, it's no, not no, an no. asterisk. Is it, is it the asterisk or is it the apostrophe? Sorry, the apostrophe? Yeah, it's apostrophe. It's a single quote. Yeah. It's not the backwards one. It's the one that you would use if you were saying apostrophe S. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. So, yes, question? Is, could you sugar your sugar list and just say cons 1, 2, 3, 4? You get the same result? Instead of saying list 1, 2, 3, 4, if I just said cons 1, 2, 3, 4, it would actually be sugar to list. Cons takes two arguments. We've just given it four. So this isn't going to no, work. What if you put the one and the two in parentheses? I oh, know we're trying to evaluate that. So, yeah, no, never mind. Okay. There are ways of cheating for writing lists. Let's not go there today. Let's, let's use for now, let's use list and cons <coughs> to build up these structures. Okay, we'll see in a little while that we can use a shorthand cheat and not use these. But let's go with it for now. So, if I wanted to get the number three out of this list, the car of the cutter of the cutter, and of course we have nothing defined here. So let's say that we actually define this to be something. Three. So the way we work on these, if we've got the multiples, or even if we don't have the multiples, we work from right to left. So the first thing we do is we take the cutter. That's this guy. Then we take its cutter, rather, it's this guy. Should have drawn it quite so far. We take its cutter, and then we take its car. Okay. The three. So this would actually, so we could expand this out as, we could write it out if you wanted to see it. Car, cutter, cutter, D. So the first thing we do is we take the cutter of D, which is what the second cell of our cons is pointing to, this part here. <laughs> the next thing we do is we take the cutter of that, which is what the second cell of our as that is pointing to, and then finally we take its car, three. So in general, to extract from lists, list it's always going to be two, uh, one fewer Ds, one A and one fewer Ds than the position of the thing in its list, in the list. Uh, so sure, one I one guess you could think of it that way. Yeah, right. But you can only put six in here. So after that, you'd have to start nesting more of them. But we'll see tomorrow that there are ways of manipulating lists that we won't end up writing these large strings of cars and cutters and things like that. What we can do is we can actually go through a list one element at a time. We can append things to lists. We can manipulate lists. We can multiply every element by two, things like that. We'll do that tomorrow. Okay. Given that we have now seen con cells, let's go back to make rat. Usually after one in stops talking about one topic to talk about another topic, it's because they're sort of related. So how could we define make rat? Now let's say we're going to define make rat x and y. 
cons x, y. Give me an alternative for what I just wrote. Anyone? We could say list, but I'm not talking about that, actually. What I was suggesting, there are many alternatives. That's the answer. We could just define make rat to be cons. I don't have to build up the lambdas. We could do that. So given that we've got this constructor, we should write our selectors. So we had numer on x is going to be the car of x, or alternatively, Now, just subtlety about these. The book talks a little bit about why they choose to do it this way versus that way. If we define numer to be car, then basically what's going to happen is if we wanted somehow to step into tracing the list, we would be tracing into any car, whereas this would allow us to distinguish whether we were going into the numer or the car. That's what the book talks about. We haven't been doing any stepping. Actually, has anybody found the info file on stepping? No. So, in any case. Um, but either of these are fine, given that we're not doing any stepping anyway. That's a little more elegant, actually. How would we write denominator? So we could write it one of two ways. Denominator x, good or x. Or we could just define denom to be x. Rather, yes. If we define denom to be x, what would happen? <laughs> Boom. <laughs> we would have badness. Bad things. It wouldn't work right. OK, so this is our, what do we call this? Constructor. And these are our selectors. Now we have broken the abstraction barrier. We know what they do. We've gone through that level. Before we were using them without knowing what they did. Now we've broken through that barrier. Is that the only way to assign a value to like the bar or something? Like, like, if you look over here on the board to the right, like the cutter of the was that? Uh, the cutter of D is this structure here. Let's say you had the far the cutter of the cutter, which is three. How do you change that value to five? <laughs> Someday. You build a new list. Yeah, we'll build a new list. You build a new list? We'll build a new list to do it. There are ways around that, but we're not going to get there right now. We're not going to do that. It's called mutation. We're not going to do it. We'll do it in a few days. Let's just go through the concepts. Can you put cons in place of any two uh, variables that a procedure takes? If it's, if it's a procedure that has two things, can you just write cons? Or does it depend on what the procedure is? No, like make rat cons. Could I have, you know, square cons? Well, the square only takes one. But something that takes two things, could I replace those two things with cons? Like sum. Only if you want that to. You could, but the behaviors, I mean, so basically you, what you're saying is if I have some procedure that I've been using, say, sum of two squares, uh -huh. could I define the name sum of two squares to be cons? Uh -huh. Sure. But are we going to return the sum of two squares? No, you return We're going to return a pair. Okay. okay, so certainly you can name cons anything you want but you're probably not going to get the behavior that you're expecting to get out of it. Yep. I don't know if it's just a joke. What's the difference between a numer and a car? Okay, numer was this data abstraction we had. And before we didn't know what numer was doing. Okay, here, once we've seen what it goes to, there actually is no difference, right? Numer is defined to be car. It does the same thing. OK, but before when we were writing things, we had no idea what was going on internally. And that's what we call a data abstraction. It makes our code easier to read. Because when we were writing our procedures before, we saw that we were making a rational 
of a numerator and a denominator. Now, if we were defining everything and we said, instead of make rat cons, and to get the numerator we said car, and get the denominator we said cutter, our code would have been a lot less clear. When you went to read your code, you would have been like, okay, I'm consing this and this. Whereas if we call them make rat numer and denom, it's much easier to read the code. You don't even need to know what's going on to see what's going to happen in that code. But they're both primitives and they're both the same. Isn't the Car cutter and cons are primitives. Oh, now we've defined it. numer and oh, denom to be that, but they're not primitives. Yes? Are you a bit unclear what form x and y are going in to make that? And are they going in as like 5.63 and 3.75 and it's coming and spitting out a rational fraction? No. No, we're passing in the numerator and the denominator. Oh, of one number? Mm-hmm. Right, so that's what we saw before. We said, uh, board, board, board. When we said define one half to be a make rat on one, two. Okay, so we're passing in two integers into make rat, and it's just consing them together. So what would be the box and pointer diagram here? Well, we'd have one half bound to a con cell where the first element were one, and the second <coughs> would be two. So, in fact, make rat, unlike lots of languages, we're not doing any type checking here, right? Scheme doesn't do any type checking. We could have passed in something that had something after a decimal point. That's sort of violating what rational numbers are, what we're trying to do with this math system that we've just written up. But it could have been done. You know, it, it will happily cons them together. So the purpose of this is now we can manipulate it. Now that it's in a data structure, we can use one half with other things. Right, we can now just say one half and we go off and we can use this numerator, we can use this denominator, it's its own little happy con cell living in memory. And we can use it, this pair as a data structure representing one half together. Now, if we were talking about earlier, this, if we wanted to, we could make map, make that more complicated by finding greatest common Yep, values. let's do it. We can do it. Let me finish asking, answering questions first. So I saw a couple of questions over here. <laughs> huh? No, I guess my point is just, it's just perhaps slightly confusing. The x up there is probably that says the whole number, y down there is Sure. You could have called this make rat nd, cons nd. And here we could have said numer rat, rat or r, sure. Denom r, could or r. OK, let me make it clear. Is there anything that we can do to make our uh, define make rat uh, smarter so that when, when we put things in there, we evaluate whether or not they're whole numbers? And if, if we're attempting to sort of make a, a rat with something that's not a whole number spit out an error or something like that? Sure. Let's do GCD first, and then we can do that. Let's define another make rat. Which I'm still going to call make rat. When you've got a constructor or selector and you're modifying that constructor or selector, do you want to give it a new name? If I were to change a name here to my make rat or smart make rat, What's going to happen to all that code I've written before? It's not going to call it, right? Because it's expecting to call a constructor called make rat. If we were to change a name, we'd have to change the code. That violates the data abstraction we're looking for, our extraction value. What we're try trying to do is say, I can write all this code regardless of the implementation of make rat. And make rat can change its implementation, and I don't need to change my code. That's a good thing. Data abstraction is good. We like data abstraction. And you'll love it after problem set three. <laughs> so let's make rat on the numerator and the denominator. 
I'm going to let G be the greatest common divisor of N and D. Then I'm going to cons what? Now we have a smart make rat. It's going to reduce our fractions for us. So we're going to go spiraling off into larger and larger numbers that we reduce to something nice and neat. Just assuming that GCE does something. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Assuming that we have a primitive called GCD that will return the greatest common divisor for us. OK, so yesterday, actually, we had a question on the let, saying, why would we want to use a let? So here's an example where let is going to save us from computing the greatest common divisor twice. By using our let, we only compute it once, and then we can use it twice. Okay. If we hadn't had a let, we would have had to write cons divide n, g, c, d, n, d, divide n, g, c, d, n, d. Okay, and that's inefficient. You could have just said, though, like, define G to be the greatest common denominator than D. Sure, we could have used a define, but a let is yeah. nicer, more elegant, the better way to do it. Why? Don't they essentially come down to the same thing? Like this, no, they, they don't. Well, remember, the let goes to. Define does not come down to when be you, a lambda. When you define it as a define. Well, define just creates a binding. Which has the same factor of desugaring to a lambda. Well, it depends how you're using it. If you define G to be the GCD of N and D, where's the lambda in there? Not that one. Right. No. But if you do, do it to define it. Define G and D as GCD and D. Sure, but there's no defining coming in in our let. We're defining a lambda of g that will return, that will cons ng and dg. And then we apply that. DC, GCD, ND. There is no define there, and define has no lambda. All define does is bind this name to the value here. Now, what like does the sugar? G. So, if we said define G of X yeah. to be something, GCD, X, and 2. Right. The define does desugar, right? So this is define g to be the lambda of x g c d x two. Okay. But all define does is say this is my name. And this is what I want it bound to. And so these are different. These aren't doing the same thing. I think you, if you tried to use define in this case, you would end up doing the same thing that you do with let. Right. But Except it's not as you nice. would be creating a super, superfluous uh, binding. Can you just point out where the variable expression of the body is in that let? OK. In this let. This is the variable list. Okay, remember the variable list takes the form open paren, and then each item in the list has an open paren, variable name, and the expression closed. So this here is one item in our list, but we only have one item, 
So then it's surrounded by these outer parens. So that's the variable list. This is its body. Which you can see over here. Here's the variable and its binding. Or rather, it's uh, what's going to get substituted in for it. And here's the body. G is local to the let. As soon as the let ends, as soon as we exit the body, the let G goes poof. So if we had more stuff underneath here before we closed off make rat, G would be gone as soon as we closed off that let. If we were to do a define, G would be the two ways to so do does it. Does this automatically take care of the multiplication case then? So as we define multiplication before, will it automatically reduce? Because we use well, our multiplication didn't you do any reduction. It called make rat, and so then it would. Yeah. The reduction would not come. How, the reduction wouldn't happen. It's not mult rat. It's not anything we wrote in mult rat that's doing the reduction. No, right? Because this is this is the whole idea of the data abstraction that we have. Okay? Because we called it make rat, no matter what the implementation of make rat is, whether it's just a stupid cons or has smarter GCD in it. Malt rat's going to do the same thing. Now we're going to see a different behavior. Okay, it will look different to us, right? Because it's either going to return six eighths or three quarters. Okay, so we will see something different, but in a sense, it's behaving the same way. The constructor is still building up a rational, right. and the selector is still taking it out. So for the define, you'd have a superfluous binding for the like that procedure. procedure. But in this case, that doesn't really make any difference. The right, the G would, would be defined outside of make rat. Right, it wouldn't be defined outside of make rat. It's just not as nice. <laughs> no, is there any sort of dogma, any sort of official party line? I mean, it's just the let is the better thing to use because it's nicer, but I don't know. It's easier to understand. Yeah, it's just it's it's easier to read it because when you see the let, let seems much more temporary, I guess than reading a define. Certainly, if you're reading a define that's scoped inside of another define, you know. But let's say that somehow we got lots and lots of defines scoped underneath, and it went over a page of code. It could be harder to read. This would be just a nicer way to write it. My, my sense is more than just nicer to read. Your, the scope is going, going beyond what it really should be. Well, the question was, in this case, right? In this case, there is no difference. But if we did have more code here, then we'd only want its scope there. We wouldn't want its scope to continue down. That's really the primary difference beyond just this, what looks nicer. That's right, but in this case, there is no scoping difference. So in this case, it just looks nicer. But in general, if you had a bunch of, if you had some procedure, and then you did a bunch of defines here, to get some local variables, but you only used it right here and then didn't use it again in any of these statements going down here, then it would have been a lot nicer just to use a let for those right. in that sense. Because otherwise, those variables are scoped down here. And actually, you could start getting some unintended behaviors. right? Because maybe you have lets that you're using locally here, but you also have some globals that you're trying to access out in the next thing. I guess something is to find the global environment down here. Yes. Okay. Alrighty. So mm -hmm. let's define make rat another way. Okay, we could have defined make rat not in terms of cons, but make rat could have returned a procedure. So make rat on x and y could return a lambda expression. And we'll call our variable dispatch. C 
So, what's the body of our lambda? Well, we need some way to distinguish whether we've got a numerator <coughs> or a denominator. So we're going to cond equals n0. Rather, dispatch, I'm sorry. Equals dispatch. Okay, so if we pass in a zero to this procedure, I'd like to return the numerator. Let me change these to n and d. I keep using x and y, I'm sorry. So if we have dispatch zero, I want to return the numerator. It's one, I'll return the denominator. And otherwise, I'm going to print an error. Why R1? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Why R0? I'm, I'm saying the body. Huh? I'm saying the body. Oh. OK. I'm sorry. I thought you were trying to tell me to define the variable name as R1. And I'm like, but why? So you're trying to give me the actual answer. How about R0, right. R, when we make a rational, it's a procedure object. It's a procedure object that takes in one argument. If we want to get the numerator, we pass in 0. So we take the rational, apply it to 0, and we'll get the numerator back. How about denom? Reminiscent of problem set two, right? <laughs> okay. Could make rat numer and denominator be defined this way. Mm -hmm. When we wrote our code at the beginning of class, did we know? Did we care? Do we care once we write our code? It's the beauty of the barrier. We don't know, we don't care, it's there. We can use them. So we can define it as procedures instead of defining it as consoles. Questions? Should we follow one of these through? Let's follow one of those through. The purpose of this new make rat is to show how we can define it. The purpose of this make rat, yeah, is just to show that we can define make rat in a number of different ways. Okay, so we can define it as just a simple cons. We can define it as cons once we remove the greatest common divisor, or we could define it as a higher order procedure. And dispatch represents some code that you're using. Dispatch is not code. Remember, dispatch is just a name of a variable that we're passing in. In this case, we're passing in a 0 or a 1. It's not code. It's just a number. Huh? It's, it's a code. It's a code, but it's not, it's not like it's a procedure. It's a different sense of the word code. Right. Yeah. Okay. So if we were to define, again, my favorite example, 1 half. To be make rat one two. Okay, to do the define, we're going to bind this to what that evaluates to. So we need to evaluate make rat one two. Okay, so make rat. Let me be really formal here for the substitution model. Make rat is a lambda of one argument dispatch. <coughs> and the body of that lambda is a con statement 
equals dispatch zero n. Well, what happens? Does this n stay n? When we call make rat with one and two, we substitute in one and two for n and d. So it's not n here, but instead one. Similarly, we'd have equal dispatch one, two. And then else error. This I will provide an ellipse on. Okay, so there's our procedure object that's returned from make rat one two. Okay? So this is what one half is going to be bound to. Okay, so that's one half. One half is bound to a procedure. A right, lambda expression. So if I call numer one half, what happens? Well, what does numer say we should do? We're going to evaluate the function that's being passed in one half. I'm going to evaluate that with zero. So this is the procedure here. The zero substitutes in for dispatch. Cond equals zero, zero. Yes, and it returns one, the numerator. So what if we called denom? So if we call denom of one half, well, what does denom say that we do? We take one half and apply it to one. Well, this is one half here. We substitute in one for dispatch. Is one equal to zero? No. Is one equal to one? So we return two, the denominator. Just an alternative representation for make rat. Given the choice, we'd probably pick cons. <laughs> However, we could do it another way, and we don't know. That's the whole thing about the data abstraction. We don't know how it's being done below. There are many different alternatives that we could have. So long as our selectors can pick the data out of what we constructed using our constructor, representation doesn't matter. So, yeah. you I mean, if you tried to say cons one half or a car one half here, it would freak out. Because... Well, what if we defined our selector make rat that way and then, oops, forgot, <laughs> we did our constructor, we forgot to redefine the selectors. What would happen to us? We get errors, right? Because we try to apply, we try to do the car of R, and there's, real, there's no car of a procedure, right? So we would have an error there. Right. So if you do change the constructor, you need to change the selectors. Yeah, let's say that again. You need to change selectors. If you change the constructors, you will be doing this in problem set three. Yeah. Yay. But you'll be playing blackjack. Fun. You'll have a good time. Any other questions? Okay. Tomorrow we'll talk more about lists. Um, oh, sorry. Now there's a question. About the quiz or anything? Uh, anything about the quiz? Um, it's sure. An it's an hour long. Um, we'll have it be open book. Okay. So computer science is not about memorization, or at least programming isn't. I still find myself not so much in scheme, but certainly in C, pulling out my favorite copy of Kernighan and Ritchie, which is like the little C Bible, and looking up syntax of various things that I don't use very often. Okay, it's not about memorization. You don't always know every single thing in the language, so it'll be open book. Is it open book or can you use computer? You may not use your computers. It is not open computer. Is it open notes? <laughs> sure, any written materials you can use, but you can't use a computer. Okay, so we'll. 
not be using computers, but you guys will see next to them, so don't be tempted. <laughs> okay?